Uh, let's get it. <coughs> let's get an audio synchronization. I'm probably out because I've left this machine running for about three days. Funnily enough, on record, so who knows what state it's going to be in. Uh, so we've got people turning up already. Richard and Andre. Uh, is Lewis streaming right now? Ah, that's not good. What's Lewis doing? Is he Patreon declarations or is he fixing up his uh, bike? I saw something about he blew up his uh, Bafang. Hey Dan, sound is good? Good. Hey Endog37. Anyway, so we've got this 1398. It's got uh, Thunderbolt issues, which most people don't really care about, but in this particular instance, the person does need their Thunderbolt, so as a consequence, we will need to try and fix it. So apparently it's one's down and another one's intermittent. So hopefully we can come up with what's causing that. Hey Travis. Hey Fresh Tex. Fresh Tex Blackman. Can't say I remember seeing you before. Welcome, if it's your first time here. Hey Paul Howe. Something to do with his rear wheel gear spacing. Oh, okay. Hey Kratos. Hey Mr. Hook. Is this a MacBook? No, this is not 2017. This is a... I'm not exactly sure what year this one is. 2014, 2013 maybe? A1398. They're decent machines. They're nice for a 15 inch. And they sort of... The slightly less common part of the A1466, A1502 type family. The sort of the group of MacBooks that had everything pretty much as good as they could be before Apple went along and ruined everything. Well, the only way they could have made these better is to use an M2 slot for the drive rather than their proprietary interface. But, you know. You do come to expect this from Apple. Hey, Deathbomb. I do apologise too for those who of you who are regular. I have not been around for a little bit. Um, it's just been quite difficult to get down here and do any sort of work. Alright, uh, let's see... Which we've got the Thunderbolt. We've got the Thunderbolt ports over here. Hmm. I'm just seeing if there's anything visually obvious straight off the bat. Yeah, if you want a 15 inch Mac, then the 1398 is a nice machine to get. The 2015 edition is a little bit um, pricey for spare parts. This is not a 2015, you can tell, because uh, on the 2015, the ports here, they've got a full cover on them, not separate covers like that. Okay, first thing we should do is get the battery off, of course. We don't want to do the... Oh man, I can't use that thumb now. I was doing some repair work this morning, and um, I was using my thumbnail to dislodge something, and every time I tried it, it would just slip through and all that. I was like, what's going on? Why can't I disconnect this thing? And I found out it's because it had just split right between my thumb. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so now I'm down the thumbnail. Can't use it. I think this is a 2012 or 13. It's an immaculate condition, which is actually a bad thing. Hey, Christian. Now the reason why immaculate condition MacBooks with issues are a bad thing is because, well, you don't have something like corrosion to you know, be at fault. None of the markers are triggered. Because your ideal job is one that's got just enough corrosion to cause troubles, but not so much that it's caused damage and hasn't spread everywhere to cause secondary issues. That is your ideal MacBook fault. Hey, Q's. Uh, Def Palm, the audio could be a little bit quiet. It's probably just me. I'm 
finding it hard to and what's the word they use? Enunciate, enunciate, emote. Certainly not emote. I don't think you really want me emoting right now. I'm having to change my sleeping schedule now. I am definitely constantly getting up at 4:30 in the morning. Project. Yeah, th there's another word I could have sworn that was used, but project will do. We'll go with project for now. Just going through the process of... I'm basically taking the board straight out. Because if there's nothing visually obvious at the top here, then there's it, we're hoping for a bit of corrosion on the underside. Really hoping. Hey, Tranquil. Go JR. Yeah, so I'm up at 4:30 now every morning, and I gotta admit I am actually enjoying it. I get about a good two hours of absolute peace. Um, I just sit out in the yard. I have my coffee. Nothing's disturbing me. You know, it's it's very nice. It's nice to the point where I actually feel cheated if I don't get up until about 5, 5.15. If I get up then, then the sun's already crested over the horizon, and for some reason I feel cheated. I feel like I need to get out there before the sun comes over, while you can still see some of the stars up in the sky, and then wait for the morning to arrive. A bit of a change for me. Yeah, it took me a while to work out what your name was there, Why Nut Job. I was like, Warren Joe, or whatever. Oh, what is it? Why Nut Joe, sorry, not Why Nut Job. Still didn't get it right the first time. Oh well. Let's get these screws out. Taking a little longer because I'm a little bit out of practice. Talking and walking at the same time. It is nice cues. I mean, I do enjoy the late night working sessions as well, but I have to say, at this point in time, with the amount of things that I've got to get done, and just life in general, the um, early morning start is certainly working out much better for me. Hey, Catherine, nice to see you. Did you abandon Lewis? What the hell? That was my LED ring light just falling off. Okay, that's better. Still, you should be able to concurrently watch Lewis and me. I do apologise, I didn't intend to actually stream at the same time. I just finished my morning work, my administration, some programming. And I said to my wife, I said, well, better go get some work done, some other work and just trot it on down here. Ah, oh, lethal one. Harbinger of death has arrived. Superb. Death couldn't take you, so you became death. It is actually taking a lot longer to get this out than I th imagine. Taking it easy. Dum dum dum. Yep, that's pentalobe. There, yeah, Travis. It, like I said, it's been a while. Um, a lot of things just constantly getting in my face. Still a bit of bit of a way to go, but. Hopefully improve soon. Okay, look, gotta get this out. Can't believe I left that one there. There we go. It's all money related, so nothing a few hundred thousand or a million won't fix, as usual.
Alright. Let's have a look around. See if we can find anything that is a smoking gun for why we have one failed thunderbolt and one intermittent thunderbolt. And unfortunately, nothing directly obvious there. We'll go over the whole board, have a look, because there's bits and pieces related to it everywhere. It'd be funny if it's just bad, um, what do you call it, bad connectors. I mean, that can be the case sometimes, particularly if the person's a heavy user and does a lot of plug-in cycles. Well, we really are. The only thing we've got is a little bit of a, a wash effect down here, but... Uh, ow. Yeah, the venues, thanks to... Hey, Greg. It's a bit of a weird wash effect and a little bit of a gold tinging or something there. I'm not sure what to think of that. I said nothing really jumping out at me. And that really bothers me. Yeah, most of the time you usually with Thunderbolt it's a case of, well, Thunderbolt's blown its brains out. We'll just disable it and, you know, ignore it. <sighs> Just remove these paper tiles, a bit of an inconvenience. Uh, for a moment then I thought that diode was cracked, but it's got nothing to do. You may just have to simply say, I have no idea what is wrong. GSB. There's just diddly squat to go on here. Oh, you're getting a 1070. Yeah, actually, I've got a customer that came in the other day and they were complaining their power supply was dead on their gaming machine. And they bought a replacement power supply and asked me to fit it. And so I fit the replacement power supply, and it's still dead. And it turns out it's the uh, the 980 GTX card in it that's actually doing something, it's shorted out or whatever, and stops the entire machine powering up. You see a very quick little flick on the LEDs when you first power up, and then it's just dead. <laughs> Pull the graphics card out, boom, up it comes, back to life. It's a nice Ryzen machine too. So they've spent all the money on a fairly high-end power supply and now they've got to buy a replacement graphics card as well. Alright, I'm getting a little stumped here. Man. Seriously? 3787. What the hell? Like I said, this is why I hate it when they're very clean motherboards, because very clean motherboard means rabbit hole in most cases. Right, I'm going to take out the daughter board and have a check of that. Always important to check these daughter boards. I mean, I'd be surprised, but... You never know. Uh, what do I need? I need T8. Oh, 
Why don't you want to come out? Oh, because there's another screw in it, Paul. Kind of helps if you don't force things out that are still screwed in. This is going to cause me to have to open up the board view and schematic and actually check out what I really need to be watching for the Thunderbolt. I've got DisplayPort here and that's about it. Is that DisplayPort? Are you DisplayPort? I actually admit I don't know what that... Uh, connector is, I'm fairly sure it should be display. No, it's SD something USB. What port is this? I was going to say display port, but then I realised it doesn't really look like display port. Yeah, shock horror. I don't know everything about every connector on this. Interesting, it looks like the robot machine didn't quite uh, screw that in, right? Hmm. Uh, Richard, no, I haven't actually tested it for symptoms yet. I just wanted to have a look and see what's going on. The sheet came in saying one port dead, the other one intermittent. Uh, I just wanted to get a unbiased visual version first. Kind of helps because it's your only opportunity to pick up a sufficiently unbiased opinion. Once you start digging around, your your sort of preconceived notions of what's going on tend to take over. It's HDMI. Oh, of course, the chassis is the one that restricts it to HDMI. That's interesting that the port itself is rectangular, but the chassis restricts it to the trapezoid. Huh. Thank you for that. No wonder I was losing my head. Thanks, Willet. It was Willet that said it, wasn't it? Yes. Right. So I'd imagine in this case, given that there's no apparent liquid damage or anything like that, I'm going to start looking at the section of Thunderbolt that delivers the power delivery section of it. Um, I would guess maybe something happened and it shorted out one of the ports, maybe damaged the Thunderbolt power delivery. It's just at a first guess. I keep looking at that um, filter pack, but that's actually a USB. I want to look at the filter pack because it's like, that's an easy one. Okay, let's have a look at the ports themselves, see if we can see any char- Oh, shit. There we go. That's why. That's the problem. Easy peasy. Bloody hell. Well, that's not a board repair, that's a... That's just a physical fix. What was happening there? We'll have a look at what pin that is, but... Um, yeah, basically, got, they got unlucky. Pushed it down, shorted it against those pins, grounded it. Caused it to just simply die out due to current limiting. Yeah, so the middle two... Um, yeah, we'll have a look on the board view and schematic and see what they say. Uh, it's not always a board repair, right? Uh, oh well. It isn't so much a pin that holds the port in, it's just uh, a grounding tang or tongue. You can see what's happened. Like, that's it there. 
So I would say that this was perhaps a manufacturing fault. It was inserted, it maybe you know, got in the wrong spot, it got crumpled, you know, crumpled back and then it just sort of slowly over time maybe got pushed down and it was just close enough that it would intermittently short out things. Um, in all honesty, the correct thing for me to do here would actually be to snap that off. Because if I try to straighten that out, that's simply going to have metal fatigue. And then that metal fatigue will result in it doing even more damage later. So we'll just cut that off actually. Not snap. There we are. Should do it. Make sure I get my fingers in there. That's good. This one, it looks fine. I'm disinclined to cut that while it's working. Okay. I'd say it was just simply god awful bad luck. And when the main board was inserted into the um, into the chassis originally, it just got caught. And it's simply been a case of over time, it's um, done that. Yeah. Uh, now what do I want to do? Oh yeah, I just wanted to bring up the board view and schematic and have a squeeze at that, see what it really was. By the way, um, if you've been living under a rock or you're not really following any of my posts, I have a new project out for um, board data. It's called Open Board Data, kind of like Open Board View. And the purpose of it is so that we can collect all the diode resistance, voltage type measurements for the different networks on all the different boards. So it's a massive project, but hopefully over time we'll be able to collect together a sufficient number of um, commonly used test points and whatnot. And through that, then everybody, uh, anyone using any board view software that can use the data, will then finally we'll have access to this sort of diagnostic information that currently has been limited to those who are hiding behind firewalls and probably slurping your data every time you're connecting. So yeah, let me get things up and running here. Uh, dun, dun. Damn, I'm actually legitimately a bit out of it here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Qs, it's not currently like. Nah, uh, let me just demonstrate. Okay. Open Is it programming? That'll do it. Yep. So if you just go open board data. <laughs> Great, bad caps comes up first. <coughs> so Alright, it's it's just on GitHub. I mean look for open board data. We don't have a huge amount done at the moment, it's more in just the testing alpha phase at the moment, but I have almost finished writing the open board view implementation as well. The flex board view implementation is done, but I haven't yet released the package to open download. Uh, let's see. No, that's no good. Uh, well, this will give you an idea anyway. But as you can see, like if you hover over the pad in question, it will bring up the data that you need and it also contains the data in the column on the right there to so give you an idea of what's going on but like I said it's a big long term project it's not um, restricted to any particular boards if you have a board that isn't already on the system you can just simply put in a pull request and get it added Let's see, so basically it's all text, there's no binary stuff involved. So if we go into the boards area, you can see at the moment I've got all of these, but all of them are blank, so to speak. They simply contain commented out network names at the moment, and when you have data, you remove the comment. Now let's, let's go to the 165 board, because that does have data on it. Here we go. So no, so you can see here someone's already put in like all sys power good information. 
And we should have, um, let's see, PV bus. Yeah, someone's put in PV bus stuff as well. So yeah, it's it's just something that will build up over time. Yeah, it's um, it's a community project, and yeah, I mean, sure, for the moment, it's only flex board view and open board view that are using the data. But it's not to say that some other board view program or some other program in general can't use the data. It's uh, MIT licensed, so there's no limitation, commercial or open, and you're not under the GPL cancer license. So, you know, it's um, people should be able to use it as they feel like. And now, where's my flex board view? Okay. What was this, the 3787, I think it was? Hey Alex, thank you for Rossman Repair. Thanks for keeping up the fight. Repair for the way of your awesome software. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much, Alex. Well, hope you have a good night's sleep. Well, I've still got a good, solid day of work here. Oh, I've got to find my. Was it 3787? I'm out of sync. Crap. Alright, we're we'll be back. Oh, lo and behold, the uh, board view software loaded it up at the odd orientation. The reason why it does this, I'll have to fix it up later is what happens with FlexBoard View is it puts together the two halves of the butterfly, the butterfly board, and it tries to work out which um, orientation has the maximum area fit. And obviously it's um, not always perfect, but that's the way it goes. Where if you pull up the 00165, it obviously comes out right. So depending on the board aspect, it will change. Anyway, what we were looking for is over here. Now, unfortunately, we can't actually determine which pin's which. I know what I can do. I think, maybe. Let's see. Oh, your little mongrels are under a shield. Well, that's flipping useless. Oh, wait, no. Yeah, you're still under shields, so that's flipping useless. Which makes me think that I really should pop those shields off, to be honest. Yeah, Arnold G, there's, um, I have announced it on bad caps. So hopefully a couple of people step up. There, there's a few people who are a little bit, you know, showing a little bit of animosity. Well, maybe not animosity, but. Yeah, a little bit of like, well, you're just getting a free run out of this. You know, you're going to get people to do all the hard work. And you're just going to use it for your commercial software. Okay, it seems like that's just connectors under there, so that's fine. I was worried there might have been some discrete parts under there. Being indiscreet. Oh, which bloody way is this going? Oh, that only goes one way. Whew, thank goodness for that. Beauty. Well, it looks like we're not going to really be able to test that, but let's see. What's another way we can find out? Oh, I know. We can just use um, Google. I think some people have a deluded sense of how the world works so far as getting things done. I think a lot of people like to live in the sort of Richard Stallman it's not truly um, socialism type thing or communism but um, a lot of open source people don't really give credit to the commercial community um, the contribution that the commercial uh, community gives um, more so in the fact that the commercial side of things have to also deal with the GPL license a lot which can be a little bit toxic for them but in spite of that they still find ways um, I think there was a study done a f quite a few years ago now where they looked at who's contributing what code to uh, the open source world and they found that a great majority of it was actually developers in a commercial business 
and they effectively are being paid to produce the open source code but are giving it away free um, unbeknown to perhaps their bosses and whatnot so so a lot of the code that is in open source is actually being commercially funded but you know people don't seem to like to um, acknowledge that Tim just streamed oh man uh, Catherine, I wouldn't call myself a genius, but thank you very much. If I was a proper genius, I might be a little bit richer. But I do... There was that show, the one about the McDonald's um, guy. What was that called? Um, the Founders or something like that. I can't remember. But he had a really good comment in there about the fact that, you know, a poor genius or a broke genius is a very common thing and stuff like that because really it's not genius academically or anything that gets you rich it's tenacity more than anything else I suspect and I, I completely agree with that any opinion on AGPL2? Uh, not really I deal with AGPL with um, the PDF engine that is used in FlexBV and you might think how the hell is he doing that? Uh, so yeah, the, the PDF engine for FlexBV is actually under the AGPL license. It's available out the, on GitHub. You can download it, do whatever you like with it. So it's all there. But FlexBV itself is obviously closed commercial. What was I going to do here? Oh yeah, that's right. Thunderbolt connector. Thunderbolt con pin out. Sure, then there's... I just would have had to have given up by now. There is no way I could have sustained what I really need to do. Oh, come on guys, give me the actual... Wikipedia is normally pretty good for giving... port pins, but this one hasn't. Okay, they've got this up here. So I'm going to say... Let's see... Pin 20, pin 1. Yep, I'm going to have to find another one. Um, Thunderbolt. Uh, images. Ah, there's one down there. Here we go. Alright, so this is it here. And we shorted out. Which one did we short out? I legitimately cannot tell. Well, it was either 9.11 or 10 and 12. I'm going to go with 9.11, so it was LSR, 2P, okay, so it was data lines that were shorting out. Unfortunately, it wasn't shorting out the power pins which were on the end, so that's a good thing. JP, AGPPL2... That's interesting because that's quite a contrast to the GPL, AGPL original because the AGPL original is actually quite a bit more, or feels quite a bit more restrictive than the original GPL2. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing here. Anyway, so really at this point now, <laughs> I could have put this thing back together. And then for more surprises, I have to test to see if it even works. Now given that it was just shorting out data lines, I'm pretty confident that we're not going to have to replace anything. If it had shorted out the power lines on the ends, then yeah, we would have perhaps had some issues to deal with. Okay, so it looks like the, the tangs, they're on the opposite side. So it probably just snared on maybe just a little bit of the plastic there just pure bad luck just extreme bad luck nothing else I mean how's that oh man I forgot to do my new tape thing where I make life easier for myself and now let's go at it the hard way Come on, come on. Haha, they're in. Oh, 
Oh, gotta remember to put that daughter board back in. Well, that's probably yeah, the easiest Thunderbolt I've ever had to fix. I don't normally fix the Thunderbolts much, let alone not having physical f failure ones like that. I probably could have saved myself a whole lot of trouble if I'd inspected those from the side first. But it's always easy to say things like that in hindsight. Hindsight is such a powerful discriminator. This is AGPL2 showed for inclusion as long as credit is given to the original software and any change improvement made to that code or base code base are supposed to be submitted back to the original project for possible inclusion. Okay, JP. So it sounds like they've really changed that license around a bit in that case. It's definitely quite a bit different to the original AGPL from what I can tell. I mean, I could be wrong. So you seem to be up with that. So maybe you can furnish me with the knowledge of the difference. I did apply for a commercial license. This is something though that does get my goat a little bit. Um, I applied for a commercial usage license of the um, particular code base that I'm using and the price was just ludicrous. Um, I mean we're talking like 10,000 entry plus 100,000 or something like that a year. And I said, yeah, this is I'm never going to get anything near those kind of figures. Um, yeah, this is a small scale thing where maybe I'll sell a couple of hundred licenses a year at you know, $79 or so. Not even going to get close, and I'm certainly not going to make people you know, charge a thousand bucks a license so that I can then use your software. Anyway, so I found a way around it. I think it was a good example of sometimes commercially you can get go a little bit too far you know, if you price yourself out of a realistic market situation. Now obviously these people are perfectly fine because they deal with Adobe and you know, a whole bunch of other um, Autodesk, stuff like that. So for them that's chump change. But for little players like me, not so much. Uh, Christian, probably my screen, <coughs> probably my camera doing all that jazz. Not your fault. Uh, let's get our little screw in there. Uh, the cat caught a butterfly. Uh, not much you can do once they've caught them. Well, I am glad I did pull this apart, though. You know, it was important to check to see if there was any corrosion anywhere. Could have easily been one tiny spot. I mean, it wouldn't be the first time that we've had what looks like an immaculate board on the top side turn into having a little bit of bug damage on the bottom side. So, uh, okay, this board isn't quite lined up right. So I'll just loosen up my screws. Try and get that alignment a bit better. Okay, that's good. Hey TCRS. How'd you go, TCRS? Did you fix anything? Wow, that's totally not the right screw. Uh, how did I even think that was the right screw? Must have soup for brains. Almost long screw damage the DC board. YouTube is in a loop. Ah. Maybe YouTube just wants to keep pushing your stuff, Tim. Try and get you lots of jobs over the dreaded Black Friday weekend. I don't know, do you guys find Black Friday to be worse overall? 
in terms of jobs or still get about the same? I mean, obviously here in Australia we don't have Black Friday as such because we don't really have Thanksgiving or anything like that. I mean, I know it's more of a coincidence that it hasn't got anything to do with Thanksgiving directly. Given that it's predominantly more just to simply say, well, real t real t uh, <laughs> retailers finally start seeing profits about now. It's been insane. Oh, that's good. Fixer, 1466 was short of PCH MOSFETs pulling the PP bust of the PCH. Wait, what? Short of PCH MOSFETs? Which one was that? You're talking about that um, PCH HSIO one? Or something else? Oh yeah, 1 VO5 HSIO. Yeah, that's a classic. I love it when that one goes. Although that sucks up so much heat trying to get that thing off. I think that's when I realised I had to get myself a quick hot air station. Is I had to get one of those chips off. And I thought, it's just a little chip, I'll get it off. And that thing would not budge. And I was like, right, that's it. Time to buy a quick... Hey Bailey, is me? Oh wait, you're talking about something? Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about the um, HSIO switch, which is up on the top edge, on the underside. Bailey, is me? How's your Flexboard View license going? Hopefully, you've made more than enough all ready to pay for the license. Hey Mike Peck, welcome. What have I forgotten? Anything, anything? This is a really gonna be a really boring stream for everybody. Paul pulls apart the computer, Paul puts the computer back together. No, I'm still going to work out how I'm actually going to test the Thunderbolt. I do have a Thunderbolt to, I think it's HDMI or DVI output test, so I suppose that's a good, good first stop. I don't have a Thunderbolt to external drive or anything connector, so I won't be able to use that. Pay for the day you got it. Oh, excellent! Sitting here waiting for Australia. Oh yeah, okay. 3.30, still haven't got it. Customers waiting. Oh. Um, Mike, yeah, I'm fine from the bushfires, thankfully. Let's see. I'm not sure if Bailey is me, I'm fairly sure. You're fine from the bushfires too, aren't you? I mean, there's almost no... nothing to burn down where you are, is there? Things are just a little bit too sparse in terms of things to burn up where I am. Uh, what else? What screws have I got left? It's always a good test to see if you've done things right. Checking the screw container, do you have any screws left over? If you do, check again. <laughs> oh god, I hate these connectors. And the person's got an unfortunate Samsung drive, so they'll have to be notified of the possible loss of data risk okay let's get that battery reconnected well, I'm glad we didn't have to do much of this because like I said so it's a pristine looking machine it's not even 2015 and it's still immaculate looking okay we won't put the we'll put one screw in the bottom plate so it doesn't flap around 
go. Oof. Bad habit of nearly scratching those. It's not good. Okay. Alright, you guys aren't going to be able to see this one on boot, but... Okay, good to see it booted on its own power. Now I can plug in the MagSafe. Uh, yeah, now I've got to find this Thunderbolt adapter. No, I'm just looking around. I know sort of the container it's in. Sort of. Sort of, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I bought it for the specific purpose of being able to test the Thunderbolt ports. Come on, mate. Cool, blimey, mate. What you done with it, eh? Struth. You lost another connector. Fancy that, eh? Come on. I'm making myself look bad. Well, at least everything's working here. Remote into a let's see what we remote into a client's computer two days ago. As I got an alert on the Windows computer was running out of space. Freed up fifty gigs of space. Got an alert today is down to six gig of space. Ah, torrents. Ah. Yeah. Whenever I see things like U torrent on a person's machine, I'm just sort of like, oh god, here we go. Hey Thalson from Brazil. Welcome. Ow. Damn it. I'm okay. I'm only partially dead. I was too busy looking at what Thyson was writing and now I'm suffering. I promise you, one of these days I'm going to redo this workshop. One of these days. Just you wait and see. Oh, this. Please be this. Please, please, please. Come on. I paid good money for you. Yes, I have found you. And it was in the container that I believed it would be in. Ow! Just the container was in the wrong place. Alright. Genuine Apple Thunderbolt 2 DVI connector. Let's see if I can break this thing. Well, nothing just went pfft or anything like that, so I'm pleased to hear that. Does this have a password? Passcode. Ah, oh, very good. I like this one. This person is actually nice. Oh wow, this is Catalina. Nice. Looks different. Alright, how do we test this? I need a DVI cable. Oh man. I still gotta get myself that 10 inch portable test screen. Okay, I don't know what screen I'm about to pull out, but uh, well, hopefully it's not important. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Gotcha, come. Good cable, good cable. I hope. What did I lose? Eh, lost my middle one, that's okay. Alright, so we've got a DVI. Let's see if we get anything. I don't know if this just works automatically. Something happened, but it flashed. Yeah, that worked. It hmm. It seems like it recognizes it, but it isn't showing anything up on the screen. I don't know what I'm missing here. 
I should be able to just plug into like it's only a 1080 screen I'm plugging into, but surely that should work, right? Now I can see it's going off to the side. The mouse cursor is you know heading off. Maybe I need to reboot, but I'd imagine Apple should just let me do this without any setup or dramas. I should be able to just plug it in and it works, right? Right? Uh, arrangement... Mirror? Oh, I'm not getting anything up there. Is the display recognized in system profile or display preference? In display... Uh, weird. What's going on here? Okay, if I plug it in... It recognizes it. Oh, I've got it. It's come up now. Cool. I'm just not sure why was it giving me grief though. Now, let me show you what I've got. So, it has got it and I can replicate up here. What I can't work out is okay. Yeah, arrangement. Okay, they're mirrored. That's why. Okay, now it's okay. Now it's side by side. Okay, cool. Let's try the other port. Same thing. It's working now. Yep. Alright, so it seems to be working now, both of them. Excellent. I would say probably what was happening originally is that because of where that tang was positioned, contacting the pads, that when the person plugged in, when they plugged something into the port that had the tang, uh, folded down onto it, that's when that port would completely not work at all. So that would, it, the the plug coming in would push that tang down a little bit more, make contact with the data lines. And then in the other one, it was intermittent because it'd just be a case of vibration causing the tang to periodically just touch the data lines. So, yeah, so well, not really going to make any real money out of this one. Um, it'll just be a typical sort of very a minimal type fee on this because, yeah, there's no board repair. This is more just a exploratory surgery type thing. Uh, I'm glad we found that though. I'm, I'm glad we found it without we without going too much into things. Shut down, shut down. That's good. Which means I can actually send this back today. Uh, Richard, I did check both ports. It's all good. But thank you. Okay, that's it. Wow. So we'll screw this up and send it back to its home. And that pretty much leaves me well I'm done for the day. I haven't had many machines coming in the queue lately. I think it's my own personal psychological thing. Uh, I think I've spoken about this before. Let's get this. Um, <laughs> well, I've spoken about this before, where and it really annoys me, my rational scientific side of me. But I have noticed when I feel, say, overwhelmed in the workshop or something like that, like I feel I need to get the workbenches cleared, I need to get my organisation sorted out. Or, you know, if things aren't going smoothly here, then I notice my job's drop right off. And then as soon as I clean up, get things fixed up, organised, all the processes done, you know, so everything works smoothly, all of a sudden the jobs pick up. So, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a weird thing, and I don't really think it has a lot of scientific consensus. It's the sort of thing I would like to investigate, but the esoteric world isn't really too... 
doesn't really get along with science so well. It seems like as soon as you bring science along, it um, whatever esoteric attributes you were experiencing before just vanish. And I have inadvertently put a short screw that belongs here. Oh crap, you can't see. No. There's two short screws that sit at the back near the hinge, the, um, what do you call it, the clutch cover, the hinge cover. No, not you. On the A1502 in particular, that's, they're there. Anyway, I've inadvertently used one of them. At least I think I have. Man, I can't find the second one. Maybe there isn't a second one. Maybe I'm losing my mind. I was 99% sure. Yeah, no, I'm right. Yeah, the curtain's pretty crappy, isn't it? Handy, handy. Okay, so this is the one that should sit at the back over the clutch cover, the hinge cover as opposed to these ones which go around the rest of the machine. Now you can force them, but it's not ideal. Should be a me too for short screw. <laughs> I'm not allowed to say things like that. But yeah, that's, that's long. I've got to go around and do every single damn screw now. Long. Not only is it long, it's also got the reverse taper thing. Ah, oh, there it is. Got it. Here we go. There we go. That's okay, Richard. No worries. Welcome back to the reality. Yeah, so, so much for that. No soldering. Didn't even heat the soldering iron up for this one. How disappointing. But I figured I'd better drop in and, you yeah, know, give some... Give some hello and some comments. Because, yeah, everybody was starting to message me and saying, Where are you? Are you okay? Are you everything alright? And it's like, yep, well, yeah, it's normal everyday life as an adult, I suppose you could say. You know, you got your responsibilities, you got your fears, you got your anxieties, you got your issues everybody's got them so um, sometimes you just have to drop things that have a lower priority as it were and address other matters that are more important and unfortunately YouTube as much as it's fun to do it um, sometimes you know it does get shoved to the bottom of the queue it's just the way it goes yeah, maybe when I get to a million subscribers <laughs> yeah not likely to get to that but um, you yeah, know I'd be happy if I get to say 40, 50,000 subscribers, that would be good. Uh, maybe at that point I might be able to start pushing the priority up, but for now it's a case of, well, this is a convenience thing. It's nice to sit down and you know, share what I'm doing with other people, whether anyone learns anything or not, doesn't really matter to me at least. Uh, it's just good to sit around and have a chat since, I mean, it's fairly remote out here. And i got to admit, I do like the fact that if I'm not in the mood, I can just sort of go click and turn you all off and go and do whatever I want. It's a little bit trickier when people turn up and you sort of go, I'm really not in the mood to talk to you and you can't make them go away. Unless, of course, you uh, like Lewis the other night and if someone turns up an ISL 9240, then that immediately is their ticket for being kicked out. So let's have a look at the comments. Uh, let's see. Have you ever contacted the schools or placed a card in the ear of the large corporations looking for more business? Sonia, this is, um, it's interesting you bring up that point. I've had a few people contacting me courtesy of Lewis. Um, Lewis has been a fantastic promoter. He's uh, directed a lot of people towards me. So I feel kind of a bit ashamed about what I'm about to say, sort of. Um, I've had a few people come to me, a few businesses, and say, look, you know, we've got a lot of machines we can send you if you'd like to get the work done. And I can tell that by my tone and the way I've been talking to them in the emails and things like that, at some point I turn them off, they switch off. And I can sense that. And I do apologize if you are one of those businesses and you've decided that, you know, Paul's just not really up to it right now. Uh, 
you know, fair game, it's business, so you know, I don't hold a grudge against anyone like that. But uh, it's why I'm saying I really need to drop probably another 10k or so into this workshop and get things running a lot smoother because right now things are not running as smooth as they should. Let's see, what's this? Catherine saying something? Uh, have you made it Loki proof? Uh, Loki is constantly still testing my anxiety quite a lot. Um, I generally find I have to check every about 15 to 20 minutes to see what he's up to. This is a process that's going to take maybe another month or so before I get the confidence back in the area. There's two things I'm working on. One is to get the confidence back in the area. The other is that I'm trying to get them used to the elephant tether again. Uh, this is where Loki was a problem because once he worked out that he could jump up out of the shed, you know, off the sheds, he effectively broke his elephant tether and the elephant tether is just a little piece of string that an elephant can easily break but because when you start out with the elephant tether you start out with a very heavy chain that an elephant can't break and over time it just simply gets used to the concept that it cannot break whatever it's tethered to and so eventually you can take the heavy chain away and replace it with just a light piece of rope or string which the elephant could very easily break Personally, I'm very much against the idea of doing that to elephants in the first place, but it serves the analogy at this point. Uh, Sonia, I have been tagging a fair bit of my videos. Uh, it's a fair bit of work to do on the side. It, um, yeah, it just takes time. It's, and one of those things you just got to, sometimes you just don't have that time. And I mean, as it is, I've been busy working on the open board view and the flex board view and the open board data project. Uh, I will be improving the interfaces for open board data so that people can contribute with a lot uh, less difficulty. Right now, if you want to contribute to open board data, you basically have to know, you have to use Git um, and send a pull request or send diffs, things like that. So it's sort of a little bit above the grade of what most people who want to help are at the point, and they probably don't feel overly compelled to invest that hour or two of uh, learning to be able to contribute. They're kind of like, ah, stuff it. I'll just do what I want to do for myself and Paul can go jump. See, Loki was known as the trickster. Yes, exactly. It was an appropriate name for him. Yeah, very much. See, Lewis's Oreo was chipped and the vet was going to contact his own. Yes, uh, any update on that? Or maybe I should just contact Lewis and see what's going on. Uh, Richard, with crowdfunding things like that, I'd probably rather not. I do have the capability of investing in my own business here. Time is the bigger problem as opposed to money. Um, time and drive or inspiration to do it. The money I can get, like right now, I can just go to PayPal and say, look, you know, give me a $10,000 loan and they'll give it to me. So that's not really the primary issue. The primary issue is getting the time, getting the energy to get it done. Um, that, if someone can s ship me a bottle of that, that'd be great. It's probably known as LSD or cocaine, so I <laughs> don't. <laughs> Paul, you should try my parts tracking site. It might help you keep track of your stocks and where they are. Um, well, I mean, again, that's probably an organization issue in this workshop. If I had all the shelving and spaces that I should have, then tracking where I put all my stuff wouldn't be a problem. But right now, because I've got less space shelving organization holes, as it were, than what I need, it's creating this overflow issue. So, yeah, it's a bit of a problem. Uh, Sonia, yeah, go ahead. That's no problem. Hey, Ed. G'day. Yeah, Sonia, just send me a message. That's fine. Yeah, they're trying to contact previous owners if they still want him. It's going to be an interesting situation with the Oreo thing. Uh, hope I mean, I can understand the pain, particularly, say, for Erica, because she's really invested quite a bit into Oreo and become quite attached to him. But, like, if one of our cats f had gone missing, um, at the very least, I would want to know that they're okay. So, at least that's a good first step, because... It's one thing to lose an animal, I should say, it's one thing to lose a member of your family, a fur kid, due to circumstances that you know, like um, disease or physical trauma, like you know, being hit by a car and things like that. Uh, it's difficult at the time, but at least your brain can sort of heal from that uh, point. 
but when it's an unknown, like they just disappear, that is truly torture. Um, you will spend years uh, trying to heal up that wound and never really will and then it only takes one small thing to uh, open that wound up again and then you're, you're, you're down and out for quite a while again after that. So if these people can find out what's happened to Aurea, maybe they'll be happy to know that he's with Lewis and Erica. So yeah, that would be good. Lewis is probably hoping that they'll take him back only because of his uh, poopy butt situation but yeah I guess they'll see how it goes it's a case of you don't just don't know and Lewis and Erica don't really have the legal right I suppose to interfere as such but hopefully the people aren't just jerks and sort of go hey that's our cat give it back and they return it to a bad home that would be unfortunate that would be a bad outcome so um, yeah hopefully that's not the case Oh good, your German Shepherd's back up and good. That's good. Uh, it's always very, very, very concerning when our pets have issues. You think Lewis does actually love Oreo? Uh, you certainly won't show up, will he? Pee pee butt G3 hot. Yeah, very um, Rick and Morty. <laughs> Alright, I think I'm chewing off everyone's ear. So I'm going to go and um, get on with the other things I've got to get done. I've got a couple of local customers I've got to deal with. Their stuff is piling up in my uh, reception room. I've got three full-size gaming machines in there and the people just aren't coming along and picking them up. And it's just taking up most of my reception space. I mean, if anyone knows what those full height gaming systems are like. Plus, I've always got the panels that hang out on the side because they're all exotic. Um, yeah, it's just, I don't have that kind of room. So, anyway. Alright, so I'll leave it at that. Thank you all for watching. Sorry it wasn't a very interesting um, job, but at least it, uh, we fixed it. So, yeah, can't complain about that side of it. We just didn't have to use any soldering or flux or anything. So, maybe next time. Anyway, until then, don't let the dingoes bite. I'll catch you later.